Um, got to play that. Uh, I asked the guy whether every puzzle could be solved with a pterodactyl and a chain. He said no, which is good because the first one, every puzzle could be solved by a pterodactyl and a chain. I know because I've beaten the game with only a pterodactyl and a chain. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I played it. It was pretty fun. But it kind of brought up problems that I, th I figured would be there. And so I'm going to talk about the Wii U briefly. Wii U. Controller is very comfortable. Has a lot of weight to it. Has the thumbsticks and everything. Feels nice. It's a good, solid controller. And I really, really hope that you... Uh, that, that people will really be excited about it. Because it, it, it is cool. It's very cool. And it incorporates kind of the 3DS being able to look around and, you know, kind of augmented reality stuff. That's That's neat. And also, um, uh, asymmetrical gameplay where people are playing with, you know, regular controllers or the, the controllers that look more like this, that are the, um, I can't remember what they're called, but they're, they're like for the, kind of to attract the audience of like COD players and people are used to this kind of controller, <clears throat> kind of to bring that audience in. There's those controllers, um, and you can kind of mix and match while you play. That's cool, but... I see issues with things like there's a real disconnect between the touch screen on here, you know, on your controller, and your TV. Like with the new Scribble Knots, the touch screen, you play the whole game on the touch screen. The TV never comes into it except it shows the world. And really, the only benefit for the TV is other people can watch you, and when there's a multiplayer feature, other people will be able to interact with the screen. But there's not much connection between the screen and the TV. Now, this was a problem I found with Scribblenauts. Now, Zombie U, on the other hand, incorporates it really well. So it's really just a matter of if people incorporate it in a way that that is functional and that really makes it seamless. But I can see a lot of people kind of developing things where the TV and the screen on your thing are totally separated where the game is either here or it's here, but it's not spanning between in a very fluid way. Now, I'm worried about that, but I will see what happens, and I'm sure I will have many ranty videos about it later. Now onto the next section. Oh my god, we're running out of time. It's too much to talk about. Next section. Games to look out for. Uh, Dishonored. I didn't get to play it because the lines were like... Yeah. Everywhere. Um, the lines were super long for Dishonored, but it looked good. I got to sit there and watch somebody play over the little fence thing. Um, it looks really, really nice and really good. It's basically a steampunk kind of political intrigue kind of game being published by Bethesda. It is being made by Arcane, spelled with a K, Arcane. Um, yeah, looking out, for, look out for that. That game looks really good. Uh, Forge, as I said, cool game. Look out for it. Some issues, hope they fix it. Definitely check it out, though, because it's a new take on something that people are very used to and should get used to something better. Uh, Assassin's Creed 3. I'm sure everyone has been boobily 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 and excited about it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm sure people have been, you know, very excited about it, but be more excited about it. Looks really cool. Didn't get to play it. Didn't get to see it. The lines were again. And you couldn't... It was all closed, but there wasn't a, a giant logo that did this. It was a lot ago. Um, but it was cool. Um, and that looks really good. Spy Party, that's another one to look out for. Definitely cool looking. Um, it's a unique concept. Lots of fun looking. Uh, people are ranting and raving about it, so... Yeah. Uh, Cannon Brawl. That's another one, just... Another, I, all of these games are very unique concepts, except for Assassin's Creed 3, really, and kind of Dishonored. Um, 
Look out for that. Cannon Brawl is very, very cool. Um, Zombie U as well. That's another one to just keep your eye out for. Now, other stuff that I've titled Other Neat Stuff. Uh, first off, got to meet FFS TV or Video Games Awesome, um, a Canadian Let's Play group uh, who I watch for a long time, have, or have watched for a long time, um, probably since a couple years ago, and I got to meet them, which was really, really exciting, and I got to talk to uh, Fraser, who this guy who runs it, about, you know, tech stuff, and it was, it's very, very, very interesting and exciting to get to meet them and talk to them, uh, and interact. Uh, another kind of famous -y person I got to see, didn't actually get to meet, C. Nanners. I saw him walking by, didn't actually talk to him or stop him, I should have probably been like, hey, C. Nanners, what's up? But, didn't, he was just walking around. Um, I saw Total Biscuit, he had... There's no way I could have talked to him, because he was casting Planet Side 2, the entirety of PAX. So, there's no way I could have been like, Hey, DB, you should sign my face, or something. And so, that wasn't happening. Um, I didn't get to see Dodger or Jesse Cox, sadly. Um, I was kind of keeping an eye out for them, but I didn't didn't spot them anywhere. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Uh, another cool thing, I watched Apollo play a game of StarCraft against uh, Suppy, who is the newest member of Team Evil Geniuses, which is one of the best StarCraft teams in the U.S. Um, so that was really cool, and I got to sort of meet, see... Um, other members of EG, such as Machine, uh, Idra, who is one of my favorites because he's ridiculous and rages super hard, which is weird to me because he's the most stone-faced human being. Like, seriously, he finishes the game and just goes... Like, and he was taking pictures with people, too, and people are like, Hey, Idra, can I get a picture with you? And, you know, they're all like, their arm around Idra, and he's just sitting there. So I, it's funny that he's that he rages because he doesn't ever break this like stone face. The only time I saw him break it is when he and Machine suggested to In Control, who is an, another member of EG. Um, he's kind of like the spokesperson for EG. Um, who he was also uh, casting the whole thing. Um, when. Machine and Idra suggested to play a game of StarCraft where Machine only used the keyboard, or Machine used the keyboard and Idra used the mouse, and they worked together to play against uh, somebody from the the crowd. That was the only time I ever saw Idra smile. It was weird. It was kind of like hell freezing over. It was very strange. Um, but yeah, so I got to see them. Um, that was very neat. Uh, also. Oh, God, I can't remember his name. I think it's Jimmy Wong? Can't remember, but he he's, like, the, one of the... He's, like, one of... Or, like, the second best, or... I don't know. In the world of Marvel vs. Capcom, the new one. And he, he lost, I think... Like, 17 times out of, like, 900 games over the weekend. It was... It was ridiculous, and In Control casted some of his his uh, Marvel vs. Capcom playing. That was really interesting. And then, on the same note, this was all at the Kingston HyperX booth, which, as you can see, my bag, not this lanyard, is from Kingston HyperX. Oh, uh, this has got a big X on it. Kingston HyperX. Um, we spent a butt ton of time at the Kingston HyperX uh, booth because that was where Starcraft, uh, the Starcraft stuff was happening. Not Red Bull Land. Red Bull Land was somewhere else, which is the big tournament hosted by Day Nine and Husky, or casted by Day Nine and Husky. But we didn't get to see that sadly. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> the Kingston booth. We were hanging out there, um, and 
there we went to a couple of the raffles, tried to win stuff, didn't win anything. The biggest prize was a gaming rig, so wow. Anyway, yeah. Each prize was like at least a thousand dollars worth of stuff. So I wish we had run some. But sadly no. But that's how raffles go. Um actually uh, I'm sure Gage will tell this story. Sorry, Apollo. I keep forgetting to refer to them that way. Um, I'm sure Apollo will tell this story about about the guy who got to play Idra instead of him. Um, I'm sure he'll tell it in his video. Um, but if he doesn't, I'll make a video about it specifically telling that story, but I'm sure he will. Um, so, other cool things. Um, I tried the gun peripheral, which I don't know what it's actually called, but if you've ever, ever seen it, I'm going to use this painted Nerf gun as a prop. It's the kind of thing where you, it's like connected to a big ball hoo-ha, and you've got your keyboard, and what you do is you go like this to like look around and aim, and then you press the trigger to fire, and it like actually has kickback and stuff, and it's... It's supposed to be more intuitive. It's I played TF2 with it. It's a little it takes some getting used to, but it's actually kind of smooth. And you can do some neat stuff where if you hold your like if you hold it to the side instead of with a mouse, where if you just move the mouse to the side, I'm moving my mouse. If you move your mouse to the side, your character just goes and looks right. If you leave this to the side, you sort of pan. So what you can do is you can actually pan it and keep firing like this as you run by somebody so you can sort of do this run by like like past somebody um so that's pretty cool it's very neat that you, it's it's interesting it takes some getting used to but it was kind of neat kind of fun um another thing apollo and i caught some of the lol tournament um sadly i was voting voting and rooting for uh for dignitas um, which is a team that also does StarCraft, uh, but sadly they got crushed by, by, oh, I can't even remember who they got crushed by now, it's slipping my mind, um, but, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was a sad, sad thing, yeah, Dignitas got 2 0 by this, this other team, if you don't know LOL, that means nothing to you, but anyway, we watched a little little bit of the LOL tournament. Some of my other friends were paying more attention to that. We also got LOL water, which was... Basically, the people were handing out free water that had the League of Legends logo on it. And quick story about that. It was really cold. And both me, Apollo, and our friend Olivia, we... So, I got some, drank some, and started coughing because it was so cold then apollo drank some started coughing it was so cold and then olivia grabbed some grabbed some and we were like okay be careful it's really cold you're probably gonna start coughing she goes oh well whatever drink some and then starts coughing because it was really cold so interesting little story uh and that was while we were actually walking to the mojang booth um where there was a giant creeper that was really, really creepy. And it had, like, it was partly cut away, and it had, like, a spine, and in the spine was TNT. It was pretty cool. The Mojang booth was pretty neat. Alright, let's see if I can wrap this up in under five minutes, because we're already past half an hour. Uh, summary. So, uh, the summary of PAX. It was awesome. So much fun. I haven't got, I hadn't gone for a couple years. And so this this year is so big, and it was interesting because in the past years, usually we spent like a day in the expo hall, and then that was it, just day in the expo hall. The rest of the days we would go do like console free play or PC free play or go see panels or whatever, or go to the concerts. We didn't go to the concerts. We didn't see any panels. We spent the entire time in the expo hall, entire time. That's it, and like a couple things where we we you know, did stuff that was sort of outside the Expo Hall, but basically all of it in the Expo Hall, which was interesting because there was a lot more stuff that was playable in the Expo Hall, which is, I think, why we spent so much time there, because it was all new and playable, and there was free stuff. Um, 
it was pretty it was pretty neat so <clears throat> that's something interesting uh, another just couple interesting factoids that I learned actually next year PAX is going to be four days I don't know if I can handle four days but I kinda wanna handle four days it's gonna be awesome more PAX is always good also PAX Australia is gonna be happening next year so now there's PAX East, PAX Prime, PAX Australia. Neat. And, um, better cosplays. I want to really do better cosplays. Right now I'm working on the Scattergun um, for the Scout from TF2. I was going to go as the Scout this year, but I didn't have the gun finished and didn't have the cosplay finished, so I didn't want to go in a half-done cosplay. I'm sure uh, Apollo will talk about his cosplay stuff. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I don't want to reveal anything that he doesn't want to reveal but anywho yeah we want to do better cosplays maybe some group cosplays we were thinking maybe Firefly TF2 team um, some other stuff we had some other ideas but uh, yeah it was a, it was a lot of fun and I'm really excited for next year also thank you guys for watching I don't know why I said also, but thank you guys for watching, and I hope that I see you at PAX next year, and check out our website where you can see all sorts of stuff, um, such as content that is neat. Uh, that's NamelessPixel.net. Also subscribe and rate and comment and like and favorite and clap your hands a couple times and then be kind of awkward about it, because that's fun. Um, and because that really helps us know what you like. Um, so anyway, Internet High Five. Bye-bye. <coughs>